to bow your heads as we say a word of prayer. Father, we honor you this morning. This morning, we salute your presence in our midst. We thank you, Lord, that gathering is a gathering unto you and you alone. Here the scripture says, unto you shall the gathering of the people be. Our gathering is not unto any man. We come before you, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We humble ourselves before you, Jehovah. We decree so that thou will increase. Lord, speak your word to us. Prepare our hearts to receive your word of life. For in your presence we receive words of life. I pray that it will bring life unto every dead situation. I pray that it will stir us up unto godliness. I pray that it will propel us to walk in the blessings of Abraham. I pray that angels will minister unto us as we gather before you. You know the needs and the desires of the hearts of your people. I pray that angelic ministration would pass as we receive the word of God. I release the ministering spirits of God to touch lives, to bring parcels, and to cause testimonies to be heard in your kingdom. We thank you, Lord. We bless your name. In Jesus' name, say amen. I'm going to speak to you on what I call walking in the footsteps of Abraham to inherit the blessings. Walking in the footsteps of Abraham. Genesis chapter 12 verse 1. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that cursed thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Now this wasn't the blessing. This was not a blessing. This was a promise. It's not a blessing. He says, I will. That's making a promise to Abraham. That I will do some things. So Genesis chapter 1, chapter 12, verse 1 to 3 or 4. Is not the release of the blessing. Say amen. It's a promise. There were some things that Abraham was supposed to do. To walk in the blessing. To cause God to release the blessing. Over the life of Abraham. And those are the things that we want to look at. As we study the life of Abraham. God gave his word. I will bless you. I will make your name great. I will bless those that bless you. I will curse those that curse you. And in you shall all the families of the earth bless. God made that solemn promise to Abraham. So if Abraham had not gotten out of his father's home, the blessings would not be made manifest. There are some things that Abraham was supposed to do. And as we study the life of Abraham, we get to know the things that stir up the blessings of God in our lives. Say amen. So we want to walk in the footsteps of Abraham. I want to walk in the full steps of Abraham. Now, I want to begin with some of the things that we have learned already. Now, one of the things that we learned is that Abraham paid tithes. We learned it the first time that 
The general overseer spoke to us a wonderful message. Solid message. I, I pray to God that you will get the CD and listen to it over and over and over again. Abraham did ties in Genesis chapter 14. And verse 14 to 20. And when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. And he divided himself against them, he and his servants, by night, and smote them and pursued them unto Boba, which is on the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods and also brought again his brother Lot and his goods and the woman also and the people. I want us to, because I want us to go a bit faster. Let's look at verse 20. And blessed be the most high God which had delivered thy enemies into thy hand. And he gave him tithes. This is when Melchizedek had appeared to Abraham after he had defeated the enemies. Melchizedek appeared unto Abraham. And the Bible says, and he gave him tithes. He gave him tithes of all. And that is the key. He gave him tithes of all. He did not just give him tithes. He gave him tithes of all. And it's important that that word of all appears. Because the words of the Lord are pure words. They are silver tried in the furnace of the air. Purified seven times. They are correct words. They are pure words. Every word that finds its way into the scriptures cannot be taken lightly. Say amen. He gave him tithes of all. That was the secret. He gave him tithes of all. We are in the house of God. The children of God pay tithes. But oftentimes we do not perfect our tithe giving. And therefore people are paying tithes and they are not seeing the blessings that God promises in his word. The truth is that sometimes we don't perfect our tithe. And for some of us who are workers, we tithe only on some probably our salary that we are paid and we say that the tithe is a tent and then we we'll bring it to the house of God. But in the course of the month or in the course of the period, God might have brought some blessings your way. Somebody might have given you a gift. Somebody might have sold into your life. And we take all those ones out and pay tithes only on our salary. That one is not tithes of all. Are you listening to me? He paid tithes of all. If God did not want us to emphasize on the of all, he would have stopped the scriptures at the point where he said, and he paid tithes. But God in his wisdom, knowing that that is the key, put in the scriptures that Abraham paid tithes of all. And therefore, when you go into Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, it says that, Bring ye all the tithes. Bring ye all the tithes. Not some of the tithes. Not part of the tithes. All of the tithes. Everything that God has brought into your life, God through men, because God says, I will bless you through men. The Bible says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, running over, shall God calls men to give unto you. It is God who is working behind the scene. Causing people to bring you abundance. It is the hand of God. He uses men. Are you listening to me? So God knows what he has brought into your bosom. And what you are bringing to him as a tithe. When it is not the tithe of all. It doesn't merit the blessing. That's why some of us are paying tithe. 
tight that we are not seeing the breakthroughs yes we are paying ties but the enemy the the the, the destroyer is coming our way and causing havoc in our life because god promises us that when we pay the ties three things will happen the Bible says that he will cause the windows of heaven to be open unto us and he will pour us down a blessing that will have no room to contain. And then he says that he will make you a delightsome land, an attractive land, an attractive person. People will see you and see the goodness of God. They will see the wonderful works of God. They will see the beauty of Jehovah. He will make you a delightsome land. Are you listening to me? But you see, we don't perfect our titan. Abraham paid tithes of all. He paid tithes of all, not some. I pray to God, if you want to walk in the full steps of Abraham, we should learn the principles of paying tithes of all. And God blesses us with. That's why God could not hold back. Because the words of the Lord are solid words. God is watching over it to perform it. God is a performer of his word. God is a performer of his word. God is a performer of his word. Whatever he has spoken, he has the ability, the unction, the strength, the grace, the anointing to do it. But God looks, you see, the scripture says that if you put your hands into the plow and you look back, you are not fit for the kingdom. The scripture says that God told them, uh, Moses that if you respond, if you build, if you go by the Ten Commandments, you, you fulfill nine and you leave one out, you still won't merit it. That's God. That's God. He says the standards. We don't determine the standards. God determines the standards. And if we want to receive the blessing from Jehovah, we must go by his standards. That's the only way to cause the flood of blessings to come our way. Abraham paid tithes of all. Say amen. The second thing I want to talk about is the fact that we learned and it's a good thing we learned that abraham obeyed god in many ways and 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 reverend reverend bodo and bodo preached a wonderful message i was so blessed with that message i pray to god that you will pick that cd and learn because faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word of the law so get those cds listen to them instead of listening to politicians who will tell you lies on the airways there's no difference the sons of adam are the same i said the sons of adam they are the same they can put on any cloak and name it ZYF or name it CCS. They are the same. Don't worry your eyes over this. For here we have no continuing city. Yet on this earth. If you are in this earth and all your desire and ambition is to amass the world of this land you are of all men to be pitied because you leave it god has made it in such a way that you will not take an iota of what you came to meet on earth out of this earth you will leave it so let's desire things that has eternal value say amen so buy the CDs, listen to them, listen to them. Let the Holy Ghost expand the word unto you. Abraham obeyed God. Abraham obeyed God. And we 
we see that when God told Abraham, leave your father, leave your, your kindred. In, 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 in Genesis chapter 12, leave your kingdom, leave your father, leave them and go to the land that I will show you. The Bible says Abraham immediately obeyed. When God told him, take your son, your son Isaac, the one that you love. And I love the way <laughs> Reverend Benfudo put it. God qualified it. Your son, because at God, Abraham had two sons, Ishmael. <laughs> Ishmael and, and, and Isaac. So he emphasized the one that you love most. Is the one I want you to sacrifice. And listen to what God, what Abraham did when God told him to do it. In Genesis chapter 22 and verse 3. Genesis 22 verse 3. And Abraham rose up early in the morning. And saddled the ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went into a place of which God had told him. Instantly. So the obedience of all, all obedience is not obedience. Obedience is not the same everywhere. No, we have to qualify it. The obedience of Abraham was spontaneous. When God told him, leave your father's son, immediately he left. When God told him, go and kill your son, sacrifice him from, the Bible says, early in the morning. The following day, he sat with the ass and obeyed. He did not contemplate, he did not discuss it, he did not look at it, he did not consider, consider it. He obeyed instantly. When God told him, at a point in time, Hagar, Hagar, the maid who, who gave birth to Ishmael for Abraham, was trying to misbehave. And, 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 and Sarah told Abraham that he should send the maid away and the son. But you know, Abraham loved Ishmael as well because it's his son. And when Sarah said that he should, he should let the, 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 the Ishmael and the mother leave, leave the house. And it is not a strange thing to hear some things like this because it happens in our day are you hearing me and God told him and, and, and uh, uh, Sarah said let them go and Abraham was, was a bit disturbed the Bible says he was disturbed let's look at what, how the scriptures put it let's look at it in Genesis 21 verse 1 and the Lord visited Sarah, and he, as he has said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. Verse 2, for Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age, and, and at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare unto to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as God had commanded him. <laughs> Thank God. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born. Who? And Sarah said, God had made me to laugh so that all that here will laugh with me. And, he, and she said, who will have said unto Abraham that Sarah shall have given children son? For I have borne him a son in his old age. And the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which he had borne unto Abraham, mocking. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bond woman and her son, for the son of this bond woman shall not be here with my, with my son, even with Isaac. And the thing was grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. And the thing was grievous. It was not an interesting thing for Abraham to hear. It worried Abraham. It disturbed Abraham. It was grievous to Abraham. But move. Verse 12. And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of thy bond woman. 
in, in all that Sarah had said unto thee, hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall I see the call. So God told him, what your wife uh, Sarah has said, do it! Do it! Though the thing was grievous to Abraham, God said, do it! Let's look at the... And also the son of the one one will I make a nation because of his I see moon. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child and sent her away. It was grievous to Abraham that Abraham obeyed God spontaneously, unquestionably, fully. It's not all obedience. When God tells you something, you have to drag your feet, drag your feet, drag your feet. It is not the steps of Abraham. Oftentimes, we, we obey God reluctantly. Abraham obeyed God willingly and spontaneously and without questioning. And he did it fully. The scripture says, we will be in a position to condemn all disobedience when our obedience is fulfilled is completely made whole we obeyed, we obeyed god totally absolutely spontaneously because god said it abraham was there and listen to what god said in genesis chapter 12 and let chapter 22 and verse 12 genesis chapter 22 obedience is based on a certain foundation and if you don't have that foundation obeying god will be difficult for you and he said this was when Ab abraham had taken isaac put him on the altar and was about to slay him and an angel appeared and he said lay not thy hand upon the lad neither do thou anything unto him for now say now for now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son from So Abraham's obedience was based on the foundation of godly fear. Now I know that thou fearest God. Abraham feared God. He had a deep reverence for God. The fear of God is not like the fear of lions. It's the respect, deep respect, deep reverence for God. Where you see God as everything. Where you see that it is in him you live, you move and have your being. Abraham feared God and God testified and said, Now, thy disobedience, now I know. That thou feared the Lord. Now. Now. Can God say so about you? And say my son Samuel. My son Emmanuel. My son Philip. My daughter Mary. Now I know. That thou fearest me. It is the fear of God. That prolongs life. That's why Abraham lived long, 175 years. Fear of the Lord, it prolongs life. Don't take the scriptures. Just, just, the scriptures are pure words. They are words of life. Jesus said, the words I speak to you, they are life. They are spirit and they are life. Every word in the scriptures is spirit and is at life. When you take it, you invite it. When you put inside you, it begins to work. And it works for you. See, man. Because the fear of the Lord prolongs life. See, man. Proverbs 10, 27. Look at what the scriptures say about the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord prolonged days. But the years of the wicked shall be shortened. The fear of the Lord prolonged. Kalim Mosiah. When you fear the Lord, cancer can dominate you. I say your life will not be cut short. Because what's word? He made this word with words. Huh. 
Bible says he upholds all things by the word of his power. All things. The word of God. The fear of the Lord prolonged days. As you fear God, as you walk in the fear of the Lord, you are guaranteed by divinity. You are guaranteed by God Almighty that your days will be prolonged. You will not die long. You will not die young. You will not die young. Because the words of God are true. Say amen. And that's why Abraham lived long. He feared that. Now I know that thou fearest the Lord. May the fear of the Lord enter your heart. When you fear God, you don't hide in, in corners and do some things that are, cannot be spoken of. When you fear God, you don't need somebody to be there to guide you as a, as a God. You serve God willingly. You obey God willingly. No matter where you find yourself. Some of you, when God, that's why God hasn't promoted, that's taking you outside. Some of you, when you step foot on America, you won't go to church again. You won't go to church again. Because you say, ah, may do. May do, may do. May do. <laughs> That's why God is not opening that door. He knows the end from the beginning. Fear God. Fear God. Abraham feared God. Say amen. Abraham feared God. Abraham feared God. Say amen. Let's look at one other thing that I shared with the people at the communion service. But the ways of Abraham. Abraham was generous, very hospitable. In time, the times that we live, we are living in perilous times. Because the book of Timothy says, Know ye therefore that in the end times, perilous times will come. Dangerous times. Perilous times are dangerous times. Dangerous times. Dangerous times. That's why these days, when your child leaves the house, your heart keeps beating until you see your child again. I remember when we were young, we would go and play gutter to gutter. Some of you don't know what gutter to gutter is. And our parents would just leave us because, but as we, we, we draw closer to the close of the age, perilous, dangerous times have come our way. And so in the midst of these dangerous times, some of us have taken certain positions that it is me, I, and my family. That's all. Nobody else. That Abraham was a generous man. He was very hospitable. Say amen. Genesis 18 verse 1. And, and the Lord appeared unto him in the place of Mary. And, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. Moved, and he lifted up his eyes. And looked and lo, three men stood by him. The Lord appeared. Remember what the scripture says. The Lord appeared, but God did not appear as God. I, Abraham, I am the Lord. I have appeared. No, no, no. That's not the way God appeared. Three men appeared. They were ordinary men, dressed in ordinary clothes. Ordinary men. Like you see men. Ordinary. But it was God at work. Three men. I am tempted to see that it is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. They appeared unto Abraham and stood by him. And when he sat, he saw them. He ran to meet them. In times like this, where things are tough, when you see somebody coming close to your house, you want to avoid the person. The Bible said Abraham ran to meet them. From the tent door, 
and bowed himself toward the ground. Move. And, he, and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Go back three. I pray thee, from thy servant, who to fall. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched, and wash your feet, and rest yourself under the tree. And I will fetch a muzzle of bread, and comfort ye your hearts. After that, ye shall pass on. But therefore, are ye come to your servant. And they said, so do as thou hast said. Move. And Abraham hastened into the tent in, unto Sarah and said, Make ready quick, quickly three measures of fine meal, knit it, and make it upon the heat. Look, Abraham, these were unexpected visitors. Unexpected. But Abraham saw them and didn't say that, I didn't expect you here. Please find your way out. No, 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 no. He ran and embraced them and he said, you sit down, I'll give you water to wash your feet, rest a little. I prefer something. And he went to Sarah, Sarah, do something quickly. The modern day wife will ask you. So you knew you were going to have this thing, didn't tell me. <laughs> he told give me the scriptures don't take it away I need it he told Sarah quickly 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 the modern day wife would tell she not she not I not she not she not she not quickly Quickly, three measures of fine meal, knit it, and make cakes upon the heat. Move to seven. And Abraham ran unto the hair and fetched a calf tender and gold. Ay, 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 ay. When somebody comes to your house, you see the person is hungry, you will go for the under, the leftovers. That's all you will give to the person. But the Bible says, Abraham ran into his head of sheep and he fetched a cow that was tender and good and gave it unto the young man and he hasted to dress it. Move. And he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them and he stood by them under the tree and they did eat. Move. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah? My wife. Listen. After Abraham had been generous to these people that he didn't know. They didn't know that he was ministering to the law. The Bible says don't restrain yourself or hold yourself from entertaining visited by fire. For so doing some have entertained angels unaware. Unaware. In the book of Hebrews. So he didn't know he was ministering to God. And as he ministered willingly, generously to God, God responded. They said unto him, where is Sarah thy wife? God knows the issue that is worrying you the most. He knows the prime difficulty that you are going through in life. And he knew that Abraham had designed a child out of Sarah. So God went straight to address that issue and said, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. Then ten, verse ten. And then he said, Now up, verse ten. And he said, I will certainly return <laughs> unto thee according to the time of life. Listen, for a woman that has passed monopause. And a man who was 100 years old, for a child to come out of that, it needed the visitation of God. And God assured him, he said that, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. That is after nine months, time of life, I'll return. I'll come. 
And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Move. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. And he ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. No, no pause. Move. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself. She laughed. And that laughter was a doubt, a laughter, a, a, a laughter of doubt. A laughter of doubt. As somebody tells you, me, I doubt from the and he says, it's a laughter of doubt. It's a laughter of doubt. 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 Next doubt is a spirit. Spirit. It diffuses faith. It diffuses belief. So Sarah laughed within herself, saying, So the laughter of Sarah did not come out. He laughed within herself. Oh God, have mercy. After saying, after I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure by not being old also? How can me and my husband, almost 100 years old, go to bed? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? But the younger son, I'm crying, and then I was so. Now I said, I should go to bed with you. Move to the next. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which I am old? Listen, the laughter of doubt diffused the word of faith that God had spoken. And so God had to address it. Because if God had left it there, there was no way Sarah was going to be there. Because he had, he, had, he had not embraced the word. He had rejected the word with doubt. doubt. There was a time I was in the office. Yes, sir. I say this with a painful heart. I was in the office. And I was doing my normal shadows. I said, the bank... And then the spirit of the Lord spoke to me, and I heard it clear that move for the woman. One of our us was sick there, very sick, very sick, sick of cancer. And the spirit of the Lord spoke to me, move for the woman, lay your hand on that brother, and I will perform. I heard it clear. Instantly, I obeyed. I told the people in the office, excuse me, I'll go. I'm going out. I'll be back. Took a car. Moved all the way to Kolebu. Climbed to the sixth, medical ward, sixth floor. I went there, and as I heard, I went and I laid hands on that, that brother. As I went, I said, can I pray for you? He laughed. He laughed. I knew that the prayer was rejected. Was rejected. Sarah laughed. Rejected the word of faith. So God said, Wherefore did Sarah laugh? Saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which I am old? Look at 14. So God had to repeat, say a fresh word. And he said, is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, God said it again. The first one was done away with because of doubt. So God had to repeat it. And he said, at the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. Because that word must go. But he 
this encounter, this encounter happened because the blessings of a miracle, a miracle comes when you live a life of generosity. Abraham was very generous. And Sarah shall have, look at, look at something, let's look at Genesis. And the same Genesis, looking at Abraham, same Genesis. Look at Genesis chapter 17, verse 15. This is what God told Abraham. I don't want to go far and tell the whole story. And God said unto Abraham, this was before Sarah left, As for Sarah, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. Verse 16. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Look at 17. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed. The laughter of doubt. Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, not from his mouth, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah, that is ninety years old, bear? Look at the next verse. And Abraham said unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might lay before thee. Verse 19. And God said, God had to repeat it. But the first one was greeted with doubt. So God came on the scene again, Sarah, thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed and thou shalt call his name Isaac and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with the seed after him don't receive the word of God with doubt say amen don't receive the word of God with doubt with doubt it will not work for you the spoken word it is spirit and it is life. See, man. But you've got to be generous. Abraham was very generous. See, man. See, man. Now, let me also talk about Abraham. One, I say two more things and we'll be done. Because I'm being signaled that I took the mic around. 11.20 I haven't done an hour yet so have mercy on me are you blessed? <laughs> I'll finish very soon I'll give you two things about Abraham and I'll be done Abraham was a prayerful person and he was an intercessor Abraham was a prayerful person and an intercessor. A prayerful person and an intercessor. One of the things that opens up the blessings of Jehovah is when you learn the act of prayer. When you are not lazy in prayer. When you learn the act of not praying selfish prayers. But praying to cover others. Say amen. When I say things that your response, amen, is slow, I like it. Because I know that it is hitting something. I thank God. Abraham was prayerful. Genesis 13, verse 1. Quickly. I'm, I'm, I'm. Can you put it here? And Abraham went up out of Egypt. He and his wife, and all that he had, and lot with him into the south. Lot with him. That was another mistake of Abraham. We are not talking about the mistakes of Abraham. Abraham's mistakes, they are few. The mistakes of Abraham, going to bed with Hagar, was a mistake. Taking Lot along was a mistake. 
Because God told him, he spoke to him and said, leave your father's house. Leave thy kindred. Thy kindred, Lot was part of the kindred. But Abraham carried part of his kindred. And the trouble that Lot gave him, he took the hand of God. And Abraham went out of Egypt. He and his wife and all that he had. And Lot with him into the south. Verse 2. And Abraham was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. Verse 3. And he went on his journeys from the south, even to Bethel, unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and High Moon, unto the place of the altar, which he had made there at the first. And there Abraham called on the name of God. He called on the name of the Lord. He prayed. He learned that prayer. Abraham is a prayerful. Some of us, a whole week will pass without prayer. And when you pray, it shows how deep you are related to God. Your prayer tells how intimate you are with God. When you can spend just three minutes in prayer, it shows your intimacy with God. Because you will spend three minutes Three minutes, you spend three minutes with your enemy. Because when your enemy is back to your lover, especially when, when you are not married yet. <laughs> and, and you have gotten a beloved. When you have talked ah, to about 10.30, then you go and see your beloved of to the gates of his house, her house. And then she also see you off to the middle of the road. Then you will see her off back to the, the door of the house. And then she will see you off. And say, so, oh, well, <laughs> even there you can pass. That shows the intimacy. But when you go into prayer, three minutes, you are tired. <laughs> Your words are finished. It tells you the relationship you have with God. It tells you the relationship. You must have an encounter with God in prayer. An encounter that will change your destiny. That will change your name. Jacob wrestled with the angel for the whole night. And when the angel was leaving, he asked him, what should I do? He said, bless me. The angel said, the only way to release the blessings of God over your life is to change your name. What is your name? He said, my name is Jacob. He said, your name will no longer be called Jacob. I'm giving you a covenant name. I am giving you an encountered name. And that name is Israel. Anytime you have an encounter with God, God will have to deal with yourself and make a new personality out of you. That's why he said, your wife Sarah, shall, Sarai, shall no longer be called Sarai, shall be called Sarah. Abraham, that was his original name. Your name Abraham shall no longer be Abraham. Because I am making you a father of many nations. And that thing will not come to pass until I change something about you. Therefore your name, Abraham, shall no longer be Abraham. It shall become Abraham. May God change your name. May God change something about you through an encounter of prayer. Say amen. In Genesis 18 and verse 20, you can, you can read it later in the course of time. Genesis 18 verse 20. Down. There were some five kings that went to fight against Sodom and Gomorrah where Lot was. And then they took over. They captured the people. 
When Abraham heard it, he went in. He was a warrior. He went in, fought, redeemed the people, paid tithes out of the spoil. And then God told him that this Sodom and Gomorrah, their evils are so high that I'm going to destroy them. But he said something, shall I hide? The thing that I want to do, shall I hide it? Shall I hide it from Abraham? The thing that I want to do, shall I? God had confidence in Abraham. Let's look at it. 18 verse 20. Quickly, quickly. And the Lord said, because of the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great. And because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done all together according to the cry of, of it, which has come unto me. And if not, I will, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom. But Abraham stood dead before the Lord. Abraham stood before God in prayer. The angels were already released to go and destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But Abraham stood for the Lord in prayer as an intercessor. And Abraham drew near and said, will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peraventa, there be 50 righteous within the city, will thou also destroy and, and not spare the place for the 50 righteous that are therein? Abraham was interceding. He stood before God interceding for Sodom and Gomorrah. Move to 20. That, that be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Verse 26. And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. The man was interceding. Then he went on. He should find 40. If you find 50, 30, if you find 20, if you find 10, the man was interceding. Abraham was an intercessor. Was an intercessor. But before even this intercessory distance, God had confidence. That's why he said, shall I hide the thing that I want to do from Abraham? Shall I have it? God had confidence in Abraham. That's the last thing I'm going to say. There are many other things. I'll say this last one and then I'll do something and then we'll be done. Verse 17. Let's go back to 17. Look at something there. And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham the thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Move to the for I know him. You can underline that scripture. For I know him. Do that Bible is yours. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment. That the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. For I know him. I know this man. I know this man. The confidence of the Lord in Abraham. For I know him. I know him. What can God guarantee or have confidence in you? Abraham won the confidence of God. He said, for I know him. That's why I can't hide the thing that I want to do from him. I know this man that he will command this house after him. Look at Job. Look at Job. Job, the book of Job, chapter 1. Job, chapter 1, verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down it. The devil is a busy man. Very busy. 
going to and fro the air. All the continents moving. That's the business of the devil. Don't think that the devil is resting. Because he's not resting. If you're fighting with somebody who is not resting, you don't have to rest. Are you hearing me? And the Lord said unto Satan, went from going to and fro in the earth and from walking in up and down in it, moon. And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job? That's the confidence God had Job. Has thou considered my servant Job? That there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feared God and eschewed evil. This is the testimony of God about Job. I don't know the testimony that God has about you. I don't know. Verse 9. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, That Job feared, Job feared God for nothing. Has thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he had on every side that thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land? But put forth thy hand now and touch all that he had and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he had is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thy hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. This is a conversation that went on between God and Satan. And look at the same book of Job, chapter 2, verse 1. Again, that means this a different time. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And also, among them to present himself before the Lord move and the lord said unto satan from whence comes down blah, 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 the same thing move to three and the lord said unto satan has thou considered my servant job that there is none like him in the earth a perfect and an upright man one that feareth god and a steward evil the same testimony of god even when god permitted satan to do atrocities in the life of job God still had the same testimony of Job. And he said, One that feareth God as steward evil, and still he holdeth fast, and still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. The man says to the slightest thing that comes into your life. You are still coming to church. Don't come to church again. I'll stick with this person again. After all, there are many churches. Yes, there are many churches. But there's a place called there that God told Elijah. Go to the book. For I have prepared a woman there, a widow woman there, to feed me. I prepared him there as a place that God called there. It's not every place that is called there. I pray to God that we will learn to walk in the steps of Abraham and be a blessing in the name of Jesus. But to end it all, you need to accept Jesus as your Lord. See it. Because without accepting Jesus, the blessings of Abraham will never come into your life. So my last scripture that I read, I know I'm late. Galatians 3.13 verse 16. Galatians 3.13 to 16. Galatians, run with me. Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the Lord, being made a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Verse 14. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ.
that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Verse 6, 15. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be that a man's covenant, yet it be confirmed. No man is annulled or added there to 16. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He said not to seeds through her, as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. So Christ hung on the tree that the blessing of Abraham might come unto her. So anyone who is in Christ, now let's go, go to go to 17 quickly. And this, I want to cut it short because I, I would love us to read everything here. And I want to go straight. Now go to verse 29. Verse 29. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. When you are in Christ, you are inside the seed of Abraham. And Christ hung on the tree that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us. So you must find your place in Christ. Without Jesus, that's the master key that opens us to the blessing of Abraham. If you are here today, you have heard this preaching, but you don't have a relationship with Christ. As every eye is closed at this hour, and every head bowed in prayer. You don't have the relationship with God. You don't know Jesus. You have not embraced Jesus. Jesus is the doorway to the blessing of Abraham. If you are here, you don't know Jesus. Today, if you should fall down dead, you are not sure whether you are going to heaven or you are going to hell. But today, you can be moved into the kingdom of God Almighty. Your name will be written and it will be guaranteed in your spirit that you are a child of God. If you are here and you can't be sure of yourself, then it means you are not saved. It's important that you find yourself in Jesus. Receive the blessing of Abraham and save yourself from the destruction that is yet to come. Thank you for listening to the message. Visit us on www.harvestinternationalministries.org Send us an email through office at harvestinternationalministries.org or call us on 302 222-372 or 0302-229-109. God bless you.